Hello, um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome, uh, welcome to Hyperledger Global Forum, and uh, we are happy to be presenting a talk. And goal of this talk is to bring awareness that blockchain technology is it in its early stage of adoption, and it is evolving just like it happened with the way internet revolutionized different industries or different market segments in the past. And um, this talk is going to briefly touch upon the connections, like how it is evolving the blockchain technology within supply chain uh, division, how it is able to digitize most of the processes, which were earlier seemingly impossible. And um, we will also cover on how blockchain technology itself has accelerated uh, the same digitization strategy across the industry and why it is important for us and some of the key learnings that we had over the time. And presenters for today will be um, Arun and Deepesh. And Deepesh, hey, we are from Black Blockchain Platform Team at Walmart, and we are very happy to be able to present at this Hyperledger Global Forum 2021. So, the role we would be discussing on the role of blockchain technology on digitizing the future of supply chain, and this will talk will brief on how it has been playing a central role. And the blockchain technology, as we know, has accelerated the digitization strategy with its ability to master on newer ways of doing business. There will be a paradigm shift in the way we are doing business due to the advent in technology. So welcome you all on this journey. And let's talk about the internet. So we know that internet has become a basic necessity for our lives. Our entire routine now involves around the internet. We are using e-commerce website for our grocery and other daily essential shoppings, OTT media, and streaming devices for our entertainment and news. Video conferencing tools for, for our application, for our work, collaboration with colleague, online classes and all, and medical consultation from the safety and comfort of our own home. The rise of pandemic in the last two years has made this even more existential. So as the lockdown is imposed over most of the countries, we are using the internet now more than ever. In India, COVID application is being used to register for vaccine and also to get vaccination certificates. A survey by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development found that e-commerce share of global retail trade increased from 14% in 2019 to about 17% in 2020 in April 20 that there was a 129% year-over-year growth in US and Canadian e-commerce orders from April 2019 to April 2020. A survey by McKinsey revealed that in US, consumers' adoption of the telehealth has increased from 1% in 2019 to 46% in 2020. But the internet as we know of today took almost three decades to come up to what we know as, as now. So let's have a look at the evolution of internet. So the internet was started in 1960s as a way for government researchers to share information. The Cold War in 20th century led to the formation of ARPANET. And that was the network which would finally uh, evolve into the internet as we know today. The network was not open for public use, but the membership was limited to only certain academic and sister organizations who had contracts with defense department. In May 1974, Transfer Control Protocol or Inter-Network Protocol TCPIC was established. And this was a breakthrough moment because this enabled different kinds of computers on different nodes to talk to each other. Prior to this, they did not have a common way of communicating or a standard way of communicating. In 1983, the ARPANET adopted TCPIP protocol. And this event is considered as the birth of internet. Later in 1989-90, the research at CERN in Switzerland by British computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee resulted in formation of World Wide Web, linking hypertext documents into an information system accessible from any node on the network. Since then, the internet has had a revolutionary impact on major aspects of civilization, be it culture, business, or technology. It led to the rise of real-time communication using email, instant messengers, voice over IP, telephone calls, video calls. And it also gave birth to various online discussion forums, blogs, social networking services, and online shopping sites. 
now we have seen the evolution of internet let's talk about blockchain technology as we know today and its evolution and let's try to compare it with the early phases of internet so first of all what is blockchain blockchain is a distributed and decentralized immutable ledger which allows different business entity to securely interact with the same universal true source of truth which they all can trust and why would they trust it because the ledger is immutable distributed and which means not a single party can control the entire ledger so first use of blockchain we saw when satoshi nakamoto conceptualized the very first application of blockchain in 2008 bitcoin the cryptocurrency in a research paper in 2009 he provided the details of how the technology can be used to enhance the trust on the data and thanks to its decentralizing aspect which means that no single person would ever be control anything but for such a revolutionary technology this application should not be limited to just cryptocurrency with that thought bitcoin was not utilizing the blockchain to its full potential in 2013 ethereum emerged as a new public blockchain and what it enabled was to use of smart contracts which was logic on top of blockchain this was a great breakthrough as with the help of smart contracts blockchain could be used as a platform to develop decentralized applications belonging to different domains but the blockchain technology still this time had some concern which was blocking their enterprise adoption these blockchains were permissionless giving everyone access to the network also the participants did not have to reveal their identity enterprise network need much more regulated and trusted environment where any participant in the network is known and identi identifiable with a vision to develop blockchain solution for enterprise adoption in 2015 the linux foundation started an umbrella project of open source blockchain hyperledger it enables cross industry collaborative development of enterprise grade open source blockchain the new blockchain technologies developed at hyperledger paved the way for permission enterprise grade blockchain networks now the enterprise could verify any new participant before they onboard them to a private network now we have numerous blockchain technologies under hyperledger and many are specialized for a particular nest use case any organization which wants to use an open source block blockchain today has a number of options to choose from with so many options to choose from and so many different blockchain network running there will be need to have interoperability between such networks and we have been hearing interoperability a lot today we heard that in keynote and just the previous session but when we talk about interoperability we might have different interpretation of what interoperability actually is so let's try to understand that in detail so um in current landscape of blockchain networks as deepesh was talking right you you see multiple networks you see a network which is being built for foot traceability aspect and you see another network which is aimed at solving a trade settlement or cross border trade settlement it could be uh, for uh, making sure that there are no conflicts happening in the supply chain process or it could be for a uh, identity related use case so there you see multiple island networks being formed everywhere and is this a good approach or is this a good design is the question at hand so if you compare the early days of internet where we had multiple smaller networks which connected universities or different research entities or even the different government bodies across uh, like across continents and that the invent of tcp ip and the invent of of like how we spoke about in the initial slides a way to connect a way to standardize and connect them together it revolutionized it revolutionized it brought together something which we know as world wide web right where we have hypertext document exchanged so is it something that we can adopt or is is it the model that we see in blockchain maybe or uh, uh, like there is no definite answer for that but at least we can model it around that in this diagram you see um, a uh, uh, wide areas of challenges that are being portrayed over here let's let's just look at the circles which are being drop, uh, drawn on the left side right if you see those circles you can see uh, blockchain protocols or the different ledgers um, which we call they fall into core of interoperability problem statement when we look at blockchain technology we have let's say within hyperledger we have n number of 
protocols, right? We have Besu, we have Fabric, we have Sawtooth, Iroha, and, and Indy, and whatnot. We have such a wide range of protocols. So um, in, when we talk about interoperability, the question at hand is not just how do I connect Fabric with Sawtooth and how do I make decentralized applications at that layer, but probably it's much more than that. When we talk about interoperability, it will vary and uh, around, it's, it's just like how we peel on onion, we get multiple layers. It, the interoperability question is also multi-layered one. We, we solve one and then another problem comes up at other different aspects. So this diagram kind of depicts the green ones are a technology related problem statements. And as we move towards blue, it's more of business process and business standard related problem statements. And when we talk about interoperability, we need to uh, make sure that our technology base is strong. We have enough research and done over that interoperability layer. We have ways of connecting uh, different ledgers and in, in decentralized fashion and in scalable fashion. And moving around that, trying to reuse as much as that we have built for specific use cases. I have built a specific smart contract or uh, like I have built an application use case for supply chain, let's say for traceability, I should be able to use it across in another protocol moving forward. And is that all that we need? No, probably not. Because as unless we talk in same standards, unless we talk same language, there is no point in having interoperability. That's where data standards do come into picture. And when we talk about these processes, like the supply chain industry, we are talking about th like thousands and, and hundreds, if not thousands, thousands of companies coming together and, and doing a task. And business process at each of those companies will be different. And the scale at which they operate will be different. Digitizing all these is is what we will what will lead us to have a, a better future in, in terms of digitizing in, in blockchain using blockchain technology. And within Hyperledger space, I'm, I'm sure that you might have heard a lot about interoperability projects just in even in the keynote section earlier today like there is project characters and then there is project transact which is providing smart contract interoperability and then there is project there are projects in labs like weaver and and um, the ue which is recently proposed so now let's look at a use case uh, walmart mango traceability you've seen 2016 what is the need of traceability? So suppose in case of any foodborne illness, when an outgrowth or break of a foodborne disease happens, it can take days, if not weeks, to find the source. Better traceability could help save lives by allowing companies to act faster and protect their livelihood of farmers by only discarding those products which came from the affected farms. In such a scenario, it becomes very important to be able to implicate safe products. Also, we could reduce food fraud we can increase regulatory requirements. We can enhance our freshness and food, uh, reduce the food waste. And we can have a transparency end to end for the end user or customer, which will help us in gain more trust. Now, let's look at a life cycle of a particular item. An item and produce on its journey to an end consumer from farm to table touches a variety of ecosystem and goes through a lot of events. For example, in case of mangoes, it starts with the farmer harvesting them and then sending to a supplier. The supplier saws that filters them and creates different lots or batches. We can call it commission event. The batches then gets combined into a larger container or pallets for shipment, aggregation event. These pallets or containers then get handed over to a carrier for transportation. Once the carrier reaches to a grocery distribution center, the containers are disaggregated into pallets Let's go through a standard set of quality check and then get accepted if they pass those checks. Now these mangoes then get processed into final packet, which would be available for customers to purchase. These packets are then shipped to different Walmart stores where they are sold to be sold. A customer who visits a Walmart store, they can choose the packet of their liking, add to cart, and finally check out at the store counter. Now for the mango POC, Frank Innes, former vice president of food safety at Walmart, started by creating a benchmark. He bought a packet of sliced mangoes at a nearby Walmart store and went to his team and asked them to identify which exact farm these mangoes came from as fast as possible. As you saw that 
uh, in the previous slide, even a single product like uh, Slice Pango goes through a complex supply chain process, touching a lot of ecosystem, undergoing a lot of events. All this data is usually available, but in semi distilled manner, distributed in chunks with different parties. So it is very hard to aggregate all that data and link it properly so as to be able to trace it back to the origin and see the entire journey of it from a farmed team. Now, the team started calling and emailing distributors and suppliers, and eventually they had an answer almost seven days later. Although this was not bad, for an item which has gone through so many stages before arriving to a store, there was a lot of scope of improvement. The data was already there, but disconnected and distributed in fractions with different parties. What if there was a way for all these parties to securely share this data in a trusted fashion? With this thought in mind, the technology team at Walmart started working on their POC. So the technology team at Walmart looked at their own process as well as the process of their suppliers to design the application, which would help them trace back an item to its source all the way from farm uh, to the farm where it was grown they created a hyperledger fabric blockchain based food traceability system. It was used for two use cases. For folk in China, it allowed uploading certificate of authenticity to the blockchain. As we know, blockchain is immutable decentralized ledger. The certificates, which could be verified on blockchain, they would bring more trust to a system where that used to be a serious issue. And for the mangoes in the US, the time to trace their provenance went from seven days to 2.2 seconds. And this was a big win for a POC. Now, once the POC was successful and they had an encouraging outcome at hand, Walmart wanted to expand it. They wanted to increase the number of items they can trace on blockchain. But the food system is always changing. And in the earlier days, the items we could have in the store was limited, uh, maybe because of the transportation and the limitation of internet connectivity. But now, with the advent of internet, supply chain ecosystem has evolved. It has grown and brought the world closer. Now we are able to consume produce which are, say, from different parts of the world altogether, and which has resulted in an endless shelf, which is ever increasing. This complexity of current supply chain has made it very hard to be able to keep track of each and every item with the confidence and insights we would like to have. So. In case of an outbreak, many questions need to be answered for different parties which are involved in the supply chain. A customer has a right to know if they are impacted. Associate in a store, they need to know if the particular packet has been decalled, is it impacted? The regulators will need to know who all people have been impacted by that outbreak. The supplier and the farmer would want to know if they are impacted or they have to discard their, uh, their items. As we know, information alone is not much worth unless we drive inside from these and take some concrete actions. With end-to-end -end traceability information, which is now available at speed of thought, Walmart would be able to answer all these questions. This will also help Walmart to gain more trust of different parties involved and be able to act in a timely fashion in case of any foodborne disease. There are other benefits which could be derived from all this information. For example, tracking freshness, meeting compliance. Walmart has since been increasing the number of food items which can be traced back to its source here. So why are we discussing all these things? Why are we discussing blockchain along with supply chain in this talk, right? So because we see there is intangible bond between these two processes and and let's let's compare and let's understand uh, why why there exists a bond between these. And whenever we talk about blockchain, we talk about multiple parties coming together in a trustless world where they have little trust with others and they want intermediaries to do any any kind of transaction or interactions between them. And when we, it's, it's, it's the same thing in supply chain where, um, let's let's take a, a simple example, right? Um, which we'll discuss in the next slide. And, and um, which is about supply chain and just it shows the number or the complexity that is involved in a supply chain process and just not that multiple parties or, and or the trust that is involved but even the business processes if you look at the way supply chain works it's it moves from one state to other state like we raise a there is a um, 
there is a definite process involved. There is always retailers or, or, or the dealers who will be sending a purchase order request, and then there will be um, a big chain of events happening post that, starting from like generating a BOL document and then going all the way until it is received at that store with, with the receipt advice. So there, it's a it's a process. It has definiteness. It has its own states moving from one place to I mean, one state to other state, and just not this. It's we also have shared value uh, realization through blockchain technology. It's not just that any one party is gaining benefit or reaping all the benefits in in, in here in using blockchain technology. Using blockchain technology for traceability will give visibility to each and every party, including the data which they are exchanging or. Or the or the data they need in real time. Not just that; it would also help them in in resolving any disputes. And all these without having to um, have a third party uh, presence in the in the network. And it's we so far whatever we discussed is is one use case, right? And then since then, Walmart has been ex expanding use of blockchain into multiple arenas. If you just look at the complexity involved in any supply chain process, and by the way, this is a screenshot from BCG Analytics, you can see um, number of different parties involved on top, chatting with retailers, exporters, and the banks which are involved and their customs, and then there are stores, and all the way until a purchaser at the, at the retail store receives their goods. So there are number of parties who are involved and this, let's just take one example, for instance. In 2014, Marx did a survey of how is their produce or of roses and avocados uh, moving from some place in Africa to Netherlands, right? Or um, And when they tracked this, when they wanted to see what is the complexity that is involved, they found that this entire process of supply chain took them 34 days. It's not just that 34 days. They saw that it involved over 100 people across 30 different entities. So we are talking about this for more shipping avocados and, and roses from Kenya to um, Netherlands. They are saying this amount of involvement. It's not just that out of those 34 days, they saw that 10 days were spent merely on uh, resolving or getting signatures or maybe like processing some papers across different uh, entities. So this is a considerable amount of time. What if we can solve all this in, in a matter of second or in real near real time using blockchain technology? So that's the value chain. That, that's the value. That's how we're seeing uh, benefit of blockchain in supply chain process. And in fact, so blockchain can help in digitizing most of the processes which are uh, like decades old, if not centuries old within, within that industry. So um, in, as with any technology, technology adoption doesn't come as as a ready uh, solution. It, it does come with certain challenges and and uh, like for example, as with any new technology, it's very rare that you find expertise on that particular technology everywhere. So this leads to small. Uh, I mean, those people who are who those those organizations, those entities who are just trying to enter into this domain, it's for them. It's it's very hard for to invest in so much and then on a new technology, which where the value they see is is after something is done, which is over a period of time, rather it's not like immediately visible thing, right? And also um, there are multiple regulatory and, and data privacy laws coming across in every countries, which needs to be adopted into technology itself. So there is, uh, there is some more work that needed to be done in, in, in collaboration in open source where uh, all these tools are being built, which could meet these regulatory requirements and which could help uh, small and medium scale industries for adoption. So once those small and medium scale industries start adopting this technology, then there is no stopping from there. It's because that's the um, breakthrough, like the barrier. And um, so, th and of course there are like data digitization challenges where multiple standards are coming up and unifying how to represent certain things across organizations uniformly throughout the world. GS1 is, is for example, one is providing that kind of service or uh, that kind of standardization. And uh, the biggest challenge with blockchain technology adoption is that it, this kind of thing was never seen before. Like working with partners was fine, but working with partners and competitors together in, in the same space, this is something new for anybody who would like to get involved into blockchain space. 
Now, is it worth having said all these key challenges that we just discussed? Is it worth to use blockchain technology for anything? The answer is yes. It's it's like you you will find some of the um, like technical aspects of what worked well for using fabric or maybe for uh, technical things on the slide but um, from the process perspective we should lead the business define the project but not the technical team because what we are trying to solve at the end is trying to ease the business process so we should let and we should let the business people or we should let the business itself talk to us and try to innovate the processes try to understand involve more and more people from across industries and try to understand how they are solving what is their problem and try to understand the value that they are going to get and explore a way of doing which is which is sound for both parties and always start small with a poc and go big and i believe the use case which we just discussed on on, on mango traceability and how walmart has been adding multiple food items onto that traceability portfolio just since then is is an testament or an example for for how to go about and adopting blockchain technology, right? And um, so if Walmart can do this and then at, at its scale, then as anybody can adopt blockchain technology to solve and augment blockchain technology in their digitization strategy. So with this, um, we'll end our talk and we'll open up for Q&A. I see a question on. So I see a question. When it comes to supply chain, we need to bring several organizations onto common DLT. How is easy to achieve? Do you see an implementation issues more cultural rather than technical? So this is a good question. Um, yes, we do face challenges. And when, when we talk about multi organization or multi party setup, there would be preferences across and so what works really well is to do a POC as we discussed just recently, right? So start with small, try to see um, like if you have multiple options of a, whether should I go with ledger one, ledger two, ledger three, or whatever it is. I mean, most of the time it it, it is that um, your partners do also have preferences on what exact tools or technology they have to use. And then discussion goes around how easy it is for you to govern that network and how easy it is for you to govern the data in, in that network and how can you protect the privacy aspects. But apart from these uh, technical evaluations, which you can do, if you can do a POC and, and bring out the value, that will expose you to kind of technical challenges as well as business challenges that you will face in adopting. Um, and I hope that kind of answered your question. I see another question. Is it not speed and volume of transactions a major challenge in blockchain compared to current technology, especially in financial transaction? So um, this is a good question. This is more of a technical question, which I could, I wish I can answer. So yeah, sure, let me try it this way. Um, so yes, when we talk about problems at this scale, this the volume, of course, is a concern and the speed is a concern. And um, in in cases like these, what works well or what works best is you will you I mean there are multiple technological aspects to it how you represent data and how you want provenance to be proved onto blockchain and to what extent you can trust the data you can follow some batching mechanisms before you put something onto blockchain and make sure you are distributing load evenly or maybe you are not throttling your blockchain network so that it breaks all of a sudden there are certain considerations which would which you can follow from technical aspects but again the key to those things is should be coming from your business you should talk to um, those people who are involved and try to understand their use case based on their inputs you will know if you can follow these strategies uh, to overcome certain challenges and how easy it is for an early stage startup to implement blockchain to modernize supply chain um I mean, this this is a good question, and I believe this is kind of a question where you are. So when we talk about supply chain, it's it's a vast domain, right? It it involves 
starting from traceability as traceability aspect you go all the way until like resolving disputes in any supply chain uh, process that is involved and not just disputes you can go further from there and make sure like for example deepesh called out the certification details are being shown right to end users to know um, you know i mean to trust the food items in in all so it's a it's a vast domain it's not that you always surface into similar problem statements but yes for an early stage startup probably it would be wise if market research is done properly to know which exact areas to attack or tackle first and expand from there and i hope that answers your question so we have i guess we ran out of time right or do we have time to answer more questions um so i i guess since we are run out of time and i see few more questions coming in and can can you all i mean feel free to reach out to us and we are happy to answer them um, reach out to us on on rocket chat or linkedin or any other forum or we are available in the conference so feel free to ping them fingers and and chat with us